Welcome to the Detroit Autorama 2024. It's Josh from Motor Vault, and we are visiting Motown. Motor Vault visits Motown. Custom cars, hot rods galore. The great eight finalists, the best of the best in custom cars, all shooting for the Riddler Award. We've got a couple of them here. The Kindigate Corvette, beautiful roadsters, Tri-5 Chevys, you name it, they're gonna have it here. We're gonna take a great look at this iconic show in the Midwest, one of the greatest shows ever in the hot rod world. One of the most radical customs of the 1960s, the Uncertain T, the Ford Model T that had been heavily modified. It had been lost for decades and just found a handful of months ago. Very, very special car. It was turned into an AMT model and a Johnny Lightning topper. This car is its second show public since it has been unearthed from the garage. This car was in magazines and everything back in the 60s. It's cool to see you back today, 2024. We have drag racing and Mopar legend Jim Tiganelli with us in his 1968 Barracuda. It is uh, quite a special piece of racing history. And Jim, I think uh, you need to tell us a little bit about why this Cuda is special and what is going to happen with this car this year. Well, we're going to add a chapter to that history is what we're going to try to do. But this is one of, they made 50 of these back in 1968. This was the prototype mule, if you will. It was never raced by anybody. It was the car that they tested, that they fitted things onto. Came with fiberglass front end, 426 Hemi, a real Hemi. Uh, acid dip body, thin glass, and two bucket seats, sticker automatic. That's how they were, 50 Cudas and 50 darts. And in 1970, when they went to the new Challenger Cuda style bodies, this car basically became, you know, for the factory guys that went on Sunday, sell on Monday, right. this car became part of the past and we got it home. Awesome. And uh, we've had it since 1971. And uh, our dad painted this car in 71 or 72 probably. Uh, and it's it's kind of been a legendary car. It's a, it's a very, my brother is technologically astute at things and very secretive about things. And this car has a lot of cool things on it. When people look at it now, they still don't have it done on their car. Awesome. And, but we, I've heard people talk about it for, for 30 or 40, last time I raced it was June of 76. Wow. And I thought, I've heard people talk about it for so long. We were at M1 Concours last year and I said, you know what, people want to see this car. Uh, we're going to take it back. We're going to put brakes on it. We're going to build the motor back up just the way it was. There's nothing fancy on it. And we're going to drive the car again. Awesome. So, and you're driving it where again? Well, the last pass was June of 76 at Milan. My goal would be June of 24 at Milan. I'm going to drive it down on these old tires, which is probably hysterical, but um, I wanted to go down the track with the old drag 500s and Moroso tires. Probably not going to go real fast, but I want to make a pass down there on awesome. the old tires, and then we'll freshen the tires up and see what it'll do. Awesome. Very good. Well, good luck with all that. The car is awesome. Obviously, we've got a little connection to Cudas, sharing the Hemi love. Yeah, you guys have a nice one, for sure. And uh, seeing pieces of racing history like this always get us going. So, Jim, thank you for your time, and good thank luck this year, sir. Thanks for your interest yes. and your time. I appreciate yes, thank it. You. In the mid to late 80s, Dodge and Shelby got together to take some of their economy vehicles, give them some performance. Everything from the Dakota to the Omni, and there's an entire club for these cars. Love it, they are wild. GLHSs are probably the most famous of all the Shelby Dodges. We got a couple of them here. These are super limited cars. Again, these condition of these ones are phenomenal. Turbocharged cars, about 175 horsepower in particular, this one which is not a lot in today's standards, but with how lightweight they are, these things were pocket rockets. C3 Corvettes are one of my all-time favorites, and this one is right at the top of the list. It has been slightly modified, wide body, L88 style build, aluminum 427. And this one's got the ITBs on it, which look fantastic. Tom Peters owns this car who is heavily involved with the design of the C6 and C7 Corvette. Wicked, wicked street rod 
Corvette that is really kind of a tribute to an L88. I love the look of this. It is hard to beat the style in class of the Lincoln Continentals of the 50s and 60s. One of the biggest, most badass American cars ever built. If you rolled up in one of these, you were somebody special. This one is a 1959 Mark V formal sedan. You might recognize that if you've seen other videos on the channel as we are currently representing one of these. These are super limited. There are less than a couple hundred ever made. And it's cool seeing another one in person. Entire row of Continentals going all the way down. Let's check it out. Really cool piece of Jeep history, 1977 J10 extended cab, long bed, prototype. Only one of these ever made. So it's not just hot rods, it's not just muscle. Some badass four by fours and we got a really, really cool 70s Jeep back there too. It's been fully rusted on it. We have something that resembles a 1967 Jaguar E-Type. It is far from it. Custom body, custom chassis, custom interior, side exit exhaust, massive rear wing, small block Chevy. This thing is absolutely crazy. Full track attack monster, but it is still proper Jag because it's got that British racing green paint. Let's go. 1993 GMC Typhoon. These were one of the fastest cars in the world at this point, which is pretty wild looking at it. It's that turbo 4.3 V6 faster than all hell. And this one has been very tastefully modified. Radwood, 90s as you can get. The teal paint, the aero disc, and the bike wrap on top. Heck yeah. Can't be a hot rod show without 1932 Ford. And there are plenty of them here, but this one was built in period, early 60s, small block. And this car was in plenty of magazines back in the day. But per usual, you got your pinstripes, you got your exhaust coming out the side. And of course, you got your pinup girls. Proper custom Porsche Cayman. Obviously, normally a six cylinder car. This one has been slightly modified. Wide body looks great on it. In the back, K24 mid engine swap. You wanna talk about crazy RPMs. This will do it. This is a sleeper. F-body Camaros and Trans Ams, some of the most user-friendly cars, sports cars of all time. Started with LS1s, and well, this one still has an LS motor, but 88 millimeter turbo, far, far from stock. I'm driving a 98Z28 right now, and this 2000 would kick that car's ass thoroughly. One of the most versatile drag racing vehicles of all time, shockingly, is an S10. And this one apparently gaps people by what's on the front. Huge LS motor. And then if you look on the roof, those are twin roof mounted twin turbos. What? Twin turbskis, Cleta style. While V8s were the biggest things, 60s, 70s, and obviously today they're still a huge deal. 1980s, the Butte Grand National with the turbo V6. These cars whooped on everything, bone stock. And then when you modified them, put a bigger tur turbo on it, bigger intercoolers. These things are wicked fast and still are today. And they are seriously collectible. One of the best looking, the best looking G body, in my opinion. These will always be great, great collector cars. This might be the contender for my favorite car here. 1968 Dodge Charger Restomod. Still has a 440 Chrysler in it, but it's got a General Motors automatic, disc brakes, Roadster shop, chassis, green with the green interior, light gold, absolutely stunning. This might take my pick for the show. One of many high level builds here at Autorama 2024, 1937 Studebaker truck. The body is a 37 Studebaker, the chassis is custom, and that is a 707 horsepower Hellcat in a 1930s pickup truck. Absolutely wild. 
Really, really nice attention to detail with this one, especially the custom front grille, the doors, the interior, everything they did there, especially that really cool blue-green, very, very 1960s vibe. I really like what's going on with this build. Something you will never see anywhere else, a 1951 Henry J that has been converted into a truck, basically an El Camino from Henry J. LS3 in this one, Roadster Shop chassis, which for any rest of mod today, you pretty much want to do a Roadster Shop chassis. They are the best of the best for drivability, usability, but the brown over dark tan is phenomenal on this and the craftsmanship that it took to start with a coupe and turn it into a one of a kind El Camino style build is bad, bad to the bone. This one has my pick for the Riddler personally. I think the 53 Corvette will do it, but we'll see. The car that I think is gonna win the Riddler Award here this year in 2024, the Bitch and Rides Dave Kindig built 1953 Corvette. This is a tribute, a loose tribute to the 1954 Corvair Autorama Motorama show car, which was dark red, red interior, and it was the first Corvette coupe ever made until 1963. This is his own take on it, Bitch and Rides, great TV show. And this car is absolutely extreme on every level. The interior 12, everything on this car is to the T phenomenal. This car, I think, will win the Riddler this year. The amount of incredible paint jobs at this show is phenomenal. This dark, dark cherry maroon on the 67 Camaro is breathtaking. And there are a couple other cars that we've seen here in the darkest, richest, craziest browns you'll ever see. If you want to see some crazy pro street custom high-end builds, you are going to see them here. Not every car is that way, but for the best of the best that's here, that are all curtained off or all edged off like this. These cars are the top of the top. 1960 Rambler wagon. I'm a huge wagon nut. And this one with the gray, with the black flake top, small block Chevy. This is a cruiser, but man, does it look like a 10 point show car. And you do not see Rambler wagons at all. So seeing a build like this is truly bespoke one off. Real history from the daredevil himself. Evil Knievel, his X2 rocket that he got launched into and may have had a little bit of an issue. That man got injured more than anybody else doing these stunts. But man, when he did it right, it was fantastic. And the fact that this is real history from him is wicked, wicked cool. There are multiple Knievel pieces here at Autorama. For a long time, Autorama was strictly muscle, hot rods, customs. Not anymore. There's a nice flair of European and JDM. Evo 8 being one of them. There's actually two of them here. There's plenty more Japanese icons at this show, including a little something from Fast and Furious. I think we need to check that out. The Mark IV Supra, one of the greatest poster cars of all time. A car that gets a lot of us young people into cars. Fast and Furious has helped with that. And this one is quite nasty. Massive turbo, looks phenomenal in every, every way. Oh yeah, it's a 2J. Oh yeah, buddy, come on, let's go. Yes! The R34 Skyline, the poster car for so, so many people, made famous by the real version of this car. This is a true R34, but the original GTR that Paul Walker drove in Fast and Furious made this car a global superstar is the reason why there is such a high demand for these cars worldwide. This is a GTS T, T, so it's a rear wheel drive car. This is not an R, but this is a proper tribute to the original Fast and Furious Skyline. Tuna Nil Crust, you bet. Fast and Furious, 
This series has changed the car world for the better. The tuner car scene, the Japanese cars, this is why these cars are popular stateside. And obviously from the very first Fast and Furious, the Green Eclipse, I don't think you need to say much more than that. Another great drag racing platform, the late 70s through early 80s, Chevy Malibu, 1980 in this case. A uh, friend of mine in Illinois, shout out to Fast Chicks Racing and my friend Emma. She's got a 79 just like this that she absolutely does mad burnouts with and killer wheel stands. These are cool looking, big classic American monsters that hammer down the quarter mile. Love seeing these done just like this. Not every car here at the Autorama, especially the classics, have to be modified. This 1939 Cadillac is stunning and beautiful and it is correct black white walls when you pulled up somewhere you took the floor and i love the way this looks and another stock example of a great car sitting right next to it 1967 ford mustang fastback and this is an extremely rare car britney blue which you guys might recognize we have had a britney blue mustang just like this but big difference ours was a small block automatic coupe this 390 big block four speed fastback extremely rare car when people talk about classic mustangs outside of shelby's in 428 mach ones this is what people want this may be my favorite bone stock car here at the show for those who are on our channel frequently you guys might recognize from a little while back a 1970 hemi cuda that we are representing the first 1970 Hemi Cuda. This is another 1970 Cuda in this gorgeous 46 pack, four speed. So similar transmission, similar pistol grip shifter, but the engine, it is more, it is more cubic inches, but it is not as potent as that 426 Hemi. Still a very rare, very desirable, wicked Mopar. Late forties, early fifties Mercs are awesome classics you see them all the time up at james dean and ducktail in gas city indiana these are very common up there and this is the second time i've seen this particular car because this car took my breath away out in the sunlight at james dean this year back in september and this is by far the single prettiest early 50s mark i have ever seen the candy apple red the white interior and it still has the 255 flathead, which makes my heart very happy. The stance, the build quality, it is so tasteful. I would happily, happily own and drive this, no doubt. This show is more than just cars, motorcycles, customs, die casts, memorabilia, photos, neon, a bunch of, a lot of extra stuff here, and especially for guys like me that are into the Hot Wheels, you can spend a lot of money really quick. nineteen fifties nineteen sixties a huge part of drag racing history was the gassers the altered cars a little bit of higher front end big ass engine skinny front tires set a trend for drag racing for a handful of decades and their stance is unmistakable case in point you could either have a coupe a sedan a truck didn't matter what it was they were going to run you hard The Detroit Autorama basement is truly one of a kind. You see everything from rat rods to extreme customs to things you really didn't know that existed, live music, showgirls, whatever. The basement, you have to experience it if you're a car guy. And if you're at the show, it is nothing like upstairs. 
Detroit Autorama is a special, special event. The passion is so real. Everyone's personal touch is on display. And if you're a car guy, you gotta get here. Motor Vault has in 2024. We will see you guys back here at this show in the future and a lot more great events coming up.